Kennedy's photographer for Rail Roof here. I'm here today with my Digital XT, and this is going to be basically kind of a top 10 things I like and dislike about the Digital XT. Okay, so this is a great camera. Um, now it doesn't compete with your 1DX and your 1DC and your modern cameras like that. And that's one of the things I don't like. Two reasons. One, I'm never going to get back as far as, if I go to trade this in, I'm never going to get the money I put into it. Never. It's not going to happen. I put over $1,000 into what I'm holding right here. I'm not getting anywhere near close. I saw they had one of the body without the grip for about 80 bucks uh, on eBay. And I saw one on Amazon for about 100 Um Battery grip, about 100 now. Uh, give or take. Actually, the battery grip has a little bit because they're still using one. This particular battery grip can be used on different cameras, so it uh, actually holds its value more than a camera does, percentage wise. So, <clears throat> that's one thing I don't like about it. Two, it can't do anything near what the new ones can do these days. This only goes up to ISO 1600, which isn't too bad back in the day, but now you can see a lot of these cameras can go up to. Not just 5,200, but 52,000. Plus, that all these, like the 1DX and the 1DC, have an extended range of ISO, was 102,000 plus. So this can't anywhere, can't, this can't compete anywhere near that. Okay, so 100 to 1,600. That's all this thing can do. So that's a downside. Okay, the upside, of course, is if you want a cheap camera, here it is. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Again, when I bought this, it was about, just for the camera, without the lens, without the, it was about $900. It was like $899, $895, something like that. Okay, so, oh, excuse me, that's the, oh, excuse me, that is the uh, up and down side. Is I paid a lot for it when I got it, and I've used this to death. There's no doubt I've, it's earned its keep, no, don't get me wrong. But um, the things I don't like about it, obviously it doesn't come with a lens. I had to buy this lens separate, which is no big deal. That's, that's the way law professionals are. Uh, the battery grip was not included. I had to buy that separate. Though. That is something I would like to see. I would like to see them make, either make the battery grip um, come with it or design it so the battery grip and the camera are one unit. Now, they do that on the Pro Series for Canon now, of course. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I like I like having the extra battery. Now, while I'm on that subject, one of the things I don't like, I'll talk about that for a minute, is the fact if you look inside the battery grip, see how this is? Two batteries. Well, if you measure the inside, I've, measured, I've done this on, uh, I'm not going to show you now, but I've done it before. Took a tape measure and measured the inside of the case. You could, if they designed it that way, there's room for three of these batteries. So there's room for one, two, three, if they would design a case for three batteries. So there's room for three batteries when they only have two. And me, I like having all the power I can have. So if I so if I can carry not just two times, but three times of the power, that's one less thing I have to worry about. And I would gladly, really, really, really like if they did that. If they put three, where you put three batteries instead of two. Um... Having said that, I love the two battery grip. I love the fact that how you, know, you can hold it different ways. It's got built-in buttons here. You got the dials. You got your things back here. You can adjust back here. So, <coughs> so in that sense, I really like it. Okay. So, and again, I use it a lot this way and this way. So, and I've used this camera a lot. Now, I like the pop-up flash. Can I put the, even on their professional cameras? Camera. Can I would put and everybody I would put a flash on there, even if it's not that powerful, as compared to say my my big my big baby here, my 580 EX. Okay, even though it's not anywhere near as powerful and can't bounce, but this when I put this on here, I can I can I can bounce flash it up, up down. I can rotate it side to side, up and down. I can even do backwards, up and down. Okay. So even though it can't do anywhere near this, 
just having this little flush right here for your occasional snap, you know, just with nothing yet. It's really important. You just want to take a little picture of your, your cat sitting there or your kids are doing this, you know what I'm saying? Having that flush right there is kind of, in fact, it's very handy. So I would recommend that all, can, not only can, but all camera manufacturers have some kind of built in or pop up flash. Um, until they perfect the ISO where you don't need a flash. I think that's the way the way uh, cameras should go. So I like this 28-300. I'll talk about that. I love that. Is it as good as the Canon 28-300? No, of course not. I wish I could afford the Canon 28-300. Uh, having said that, this is a really good lens. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure. In fact, I know the Canon one's better, and I can do a lot better focus a lot of times. There's a lot of times I lose focus because of the lens. It's not as fast as the Canon, or it's not as high quality build. Of course, it weighs less than the Canon lens, but it's not nearly as good as far as quality and durability. Having said that, it's still pretty good, pretty durable as long as you take care of it. And I have, I take care of my stuff real good as best I can. And of course, it's not water sealed as much as the Canon lens, but it's still, as long as it's not pouring down rain, it's not too bad. So, I really enjoy this lens. I wish I could help with the Canon lens, but that's another story. Let me think what else I want to tell you. Um, I think it would be neat if all this was, if you had a little, you had a little, like a square digital box, and then had, like, you have a scroll wheel here, put, put like a scroll wheel over here or over here, and then had a little digital box instead of this little dial. That would make it look more professional and just make it look cooler, in my opinion. You know, you could put a little LED box or LCD box and have, have these little markings inside the LCD box. And then, like I said, have a little scroll wheel like right here. Put it like here or right here on either side. And uh, I think that would be really cool, okay? Make it look better. Look, make it look more professional. More modern, definitely. So, um, I really can't complain about the back of the camera as far as the LCD or the LED. Um, when the picture shows up. Obviously, I wish it was bigger, but that's... Uh, it's gotten bigger with two cameras as time has progressed, so I really can't complain about that too much. It's, it's good quality. I mean, it's not near as good quality as some of the new ones, obviously. But, uh, overall, I mean, you can easily see where the picture is. And you can use the buttons here to magnify it after you've taken it and are playing it back. You can, you know, magnify it uh, to see how really good the focus is or how bad the focus is. <coughs> of course, we don't use battery grip. We have a little off switch here, which I like. I never turn it off, but it's always on. Because when I turn it on up here, I want everything on. That's just the way I've got it set up. The way I like it. It's got good grip, good feel to it. It's not that, it's not that heavy. And uh, I'm really impressed with all these. I use this camera a lot. And it's of course it doesn't do video. All the cameras nowadays do video. I wish it did video. I wish it did HD video. Um, so that's one of the things I'm looking forward to hopefully getting soon. As soon as I can afford to, I'm going to get a camera like this with HD. I want to get the 1DX or the 1DC, but right now I just don't have the money. So I'm hoping, right now the 1DX is kind of my camera because it's got, I really don't need 4K, but it would be nice to have 4K. The problem with 4K is it eats up so much memory. And to be honest, I'd rather, I mean, having full HD with 1080p would be awesome. Um, but having 4K would be awesome too. I mean, there's, you know, there's a, Plus and minus to having 4K. Again, it's a lot better resolution, but it also takes up a lot more space on your memory cards and on the hard disk. And of course, that means when you're uploading it to the internet, a lot longer to upload time. So it's it's a trade-off, you know, quality versus file size. So you know, um, pay for it more than one way. So, but there are benefits to both. So you know, <coughs> and then either either one, 1080p and 4K, are both real high, really good quality. This 4K is better, obviously. But it doesn't, this camera does not do video in any way. I wish it did. I've got some outputs here. I can go to your... If you're thinking about buying a digital XT, you know, it's a cheap camera. And trust me, they're cheap nowadays. You know, like I said, you can easily pick up just the body for under 100 bucks, easy. Amazon, eBay, you name it. But you got, it comes with cables. You go out to your TV... It's got a remote control in, and it's got your digital out, so you can run this to your computer. But I'll be honest, I would, the quickest way to get your pictures out is to take your CF card out, 
put this in a CF card reader, plug it into your computer. It's a lot faster, a lot faster. <coughs> so that is my digital device T. You know, there's more things I could go on about. Um, but the menu is, is simple to understand. It's very simple. You just have to turn on. I mean, you might have a few questions about some of the settings, but overall it's uh, pretty simple to go through. You got left, up, down, left, and right, which I like, and you get your set button and stuff like that. So it's real easy. It's real clear. Um, when you play back, uh, the pictures look really good right here. Uh, you can erase them real easy, um, whether you just want to erase all of them or a single particular one. Plus, it's even got a lock mode where you can lock certain pictures. So if you don't want to accidentally erase one picture, you can go in there and say, Ooh, I like, really like this one. I'll save it. Push the lock button, and it's locked. So. So that's a good feature. Um, of course, there's a lot of things you can do with this. It's it just, it's not up to specs to anywhere near what they can do now with sports photography and wildlife and journalism. I mean, there's some of the, the new 1DX and 1DC are so far above this because the sh the speed, the sharpness, the ISO, the ISO is a big one nowadays. And of course, the megapixel size. This is an 8 megapixel camera at its largest setting. The 1DX and 1DC start off at 18 megapixels. <clears throat> the 5G Mark III starts off at 22.3, I believe. But it's 22 megapixels. So, <clears throat> it can't come anywhere near close to the uh, resolution of the 1DX and 1DC. But if you need, perhaps you need smaller files. You don't need a big file. I mean, this this will do 8x10s. Uh, What's it? 17 by 11 Anyway, it'll do 8x10, uh, what's that, 8x10, 7 by 11 I don't know, what am I thinking of, 12 by 15 or something like that. It'll do 8x10, it's great. Uh, uh, so, uh, it's like always, you can always go into Photoshop and something and make it bigger, or, you know, you find a program where it'll, I mean, obviously they take make billboard pictures off of cameras like this, and even earlier, so I mean, if they can do it on this or something, that's even before this. They can take whatever you've got, or this, or, you know, and make, they've got programs where they can take one pixel and duplicate it, or four times it, or ten times, however big they need to make, you know, if they need to make, take a picture that's, you know, this big resolution and blow it up to the size of a billboard, obviously they've got a program where you can do it. And I've blown stuff up in Photoshop with, um, that you can make bigger than it originally was, so it's not that hard if you know what you're doing. Or they have the right program, or both. But, uh... Cheap camera, not too expensive. Of course, back in the day, it was a lot more expensive. And um, I always get a filter. I tell people to get a protection filter. Because this filter right here that protects, it's just similar for protection. It's a U, what they call UV zero, which is ultraviolet zero. Which basically has no effect or very, not enough to even matter on the, what the light coming in. That's why it's called UV zero. Ultraviolet doesn't, it's basically to protect Lens. This lens is about $300 new. This filter was about $25. So I would rather break this $25 filter than have it, you know, something hit the front of the lens and break a $300 lens. Now, obviously, if, if it's going to hit it hard enough, they're going to break the filter and the lens and the camera and myself. And, but more likely, if something's going to hit it, it's going to hit the, hit the filter and break the filter. I can replace the filter for about $25. Bucks, no big deal. Replacing a lens for three hundred dollars is a pain in the butt. And like I said, if I had the lens I wanted, the Canon lens, it's like thirty-two hundred dollars. It's not very cheap. That definitely won't put a protection lens on that. So I mean, you know, lenses glass aren't cheap, and you don't want to waste them. So always, I this is again just personal opinion, but put protection on your lenses. Okay. So that's all I've really got to say right now. Like I said, this is a great little camera. Um, I wish I could upgrade to something better, but for what for what I use it for, it's great, okay? It's just not as good as, I mean, there's a lot of things I like to be able to do and I can do, because the ISO, the ISO on this one goes up to 1600, it's not as fast, I mean, I'd love to be able to have this shoot like, you know, 10, 12, 15, 20 frames a second, this only shoots 3 frames a second, so that's another downside, I mean, well actually it's 3.4, 3.5, but basically it's 3. For all intents and purposes, and um, I don't know, I'd, I'd like to be able to shoot more and 
shoot higher ISOs and you know a lot of sports that now is played at night where you're either got the outside lights and you can't 1600 only goes to so you know, like I saw a ball game two or three weeks ago and it was like I I just set 1600 which is the highest it'll go and it did good until about 6:30 about seven o'clock it got dark enough where it was like people were there till nine the game was, and it was like after about seven o'clock I really couldn't get any pictures at least out on the field. That were either they were just weren't, they weren't coming in in focus and they weren't coming in exposure right because there wasn't enough light. Whereas if I had an ISO of range say 5200 or 6000 or 8000, not a problem. You know, definitely if I could go up to 52,000, 52, it's not gonna be a problem. Whereas this, you know, after a certain time, it just it doesn't it there's not enough light sensors. You know, it's the way it's made. Um, so. Yeah, you know, there's, there's pluses and minuses to everything. Of course, of course, the file sizes are smaller because they're only 8 megapixels. So that's a good thing um, for a lot of people, you know. doesn't take as much room on the hard drive, but I'd rather have to spend more on CF cards and have a better quality because I bought this little baby. It's a 8 gigabyte, 133, 133 uh, times speed. Uh, compact flash card and it's lasted forever and it's awesome um, and they make those a lot faster too and the prices are always coming down on those compact flash cards so but anyway that's just a little thing I'm just you know I'm rambling on I want to make a little video and show you about my digital Roblox if you're thinking about buying a camera and don't want to spend a lot of money nowadays uh, you might look on eBay or Amazon and find, see if you can find one of these puppies again this is the uh, Tamron 28 to 300 it's a push pull lens. They push pull it. And you got a little locking mechanism right here. Battery gives about 100 bucks extra. I don't know what you get these lenses for now. Probably two or three hundred. So I mean you can probably get this whole thing. Probably a hundred, hundred, two hundred, two fifty maybe, I don't know. Of course, depending on which flash you get as an extra, I paid four hundred and fifty for this. Which is a lot, but back in the day that wasn't too bad. Uh, it's still, it's a still a really good flash as far as that goes. So, but yeah, I paid four hundred fifty for this puppy, and it's it's lasted a long time and worked really great. <coughs> However, if you see people taking the, you see a lot like you see on TV like a, a lot of paparazzi's where they shoot uh, celebrities and stuff for like minutes at a time. There's like feels like there's like one call off every tenth of a second or something. It doesn't do that. Um, it, it'll do that for about two or three seconds, or maybe five seconds. But after that, it starts to slow down. There's, and then it has to recharge and do what we call recycling. Give it about ten seconds to recharge, and then it'll do about you know it'll it'll um, do that fast repetitive thing for about one or two or three one or two or three seconds, where you get about five or ten bursts. But it doesn't. You know, it's not like you can just sit here for two minutes straight and keep. It doesn't do that. Not even close. So don't think you're going to do that with this, unless, now let me say that, that's when you're running from the four internal batteries, okay? Now when you go to switch from one from batteries <coughs> to powering it with an external power source, this is a little, let me drop the thing, but I'll piece that up in a minute, powering it via this little connection right here, now that can change a lot, when you get an external power source, uh, hook it up to it. This will become a speed demon, okay? But those batteries are normally really big and they're very bulky, and you either have to have it sitting on the ground or have, you know, it weighs a lot and you have to put it on your shoulder, so it's a pain in the butt. Um, so I've never, I've never even thought about investing in that. Um, so I mean, this looks like this. I wish it would have, it should be silly. Good wouldn't fall off, and I guess it does. Anyway, <coughs> but if you want to, if you're interested in investing in, you know, some, of the, if you're going to be doing one, you're going to do a lot of flashes, just, you know, for several, for several seconds or several minutes or however long, then this flash will do that kind of stuff, but you got to have the power source to be able to really yank it out, because four AA batteries, I don't care, or Duracell Energizer, I don't care what you have, they're not going to sit there and just go, without stopping recycling. It's not going to happen. 
where if you have a really powerful power source, you can do that with this. I mean, it, this will this can handle it if you've got the power source. So, but those are those external batteries are expensive. They're heavy. They're cumbersome. And quite frankly, for what I do, I just pff, would never even think about doing it. So again, that's my overview of my the Digital X team. I hope you found this video informative, uh, worthwhile, and if you're interested in buying an old or used camera, or just starting, maybe you're just starting out in your photography and you want something to, you know, a simple, easy to use 35 millimeter crop sensor. This has a 1.4 crop, by the way. It's not full frame, uh, which means uh, basically means it's 28 to 300 is more like 56 to 340 or something. I don't know exactly, but. Uh, I have to do the math on it, but it's it's not as wide angle as it. Um, so I mean, that can be a positive or a negative depending on whether you want. You know, if you're trying to get clo you know close in, that's a down thing. But if you want to get a little bit zoom in a little bit farther away, that's a good thing. So it just depends how you look at it and, how, and what kind of photography you're doing. But um, again, I hope the video has been informative. Perhaps if you're wanting to get you know you know somebody that wants to start out in photography. And you don't want to spend a whole lot of money. You know, Five hundred bucks is what you want to spend. This might be the deal, you know, with the battery grip and a cheap lens, and a, to see if they're really going to be into it. This might be the way, route you go, or if you just want something, you know, you want to have a cheap camera just to sit around the house every once in a that might be a good thing too. Like I said, I've done, I've done numerous weddings with this, so it's great. I mean, granted, it's been a while since I've done weddings with this, but I have done new, several weddings. Well, but. Numerous ways with this, and it turned out great. And um, so, but again, technology keeps advancing, and this, by today's standard, isn't much to look at. Uh, but it is a nice camera. So, there it is. Uh, there's my overview of it. Uh, again, I hope I've given you a lot to think about and consider with the Digital XT. Again, it's 8 megapixels. And if you're interested, I'm sure you can look up Google or uh, Amazon or eBay or any, numerous places that sell photography equipment. So until next time, I'm Ken News for Photographer Rally Move. Same thanks for watching. Have a good day. And may God bless you. And as always, keep taking those pictures. Bye.